Do you need a new power supply to even use NVIDIA's new graphics cards? That's what we're talking about today. And there are two things you need to worry about and sort of three ways you might need to solve it. But before we get to the shocking truth of the matter, can I ask you to just to do the interaction thing for the sake of YouTube algorithm? I know I should ask you at the end after you've decided whether or not this video is worth it, but basically the people who stick around to the end are people who liked it anyway, so they're more likely to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe button and leave a comment anyway. So if I front load it like this, maybe you'll just give me a thumb up for the effort I've gone through to make this video in the first place. Thanks. Hello again, I am Blunty. Wanted to do a bit of a follow-up to my previous video. In the previous video, I talked about one of the biggest, most frequently asked questions I've seen in reaction to the announcement and impending launch of the new graphics card out of NVIDIA, the RTX 3000 series. And that question was, will you need a new motherboard? Because these graphics cards use PCIe Express Generation 4. Most motherboards around today, unless you've upgraded literally within the last six to eight months or so, uh, will have PCI Generation 4. Three. The short answer to that is, no, you'll be fine. The long answer is, well, you'll probably be fine unless. If you haven't seen that video and you are curious about what that unless actually refers to, then feel free to go back and watch that video. But in general, you'll be fine. But the second most frequently asked question I've been seeing, I mean, outside of performance issues and things like that and frame rates and whatnot, uh, about these new graphics cards is, will I need to upgrade my power supply? Or will my power supply be enough? Is, is how the question is usually phrased. And that question is both easier and faster to answer because it's less complicated than PCIe lanes and things like that, but also it might trip more people up out there because chances are you might actually need to upgrade your power supply unit. And I say this because the two top tier cards out of the 3000 series line do come with a recommendation that is above what the previous generation recommendation was for a power supply. Let me read you some numbers just to get some context to this. We'll roll back to last generation first. The 2070, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti, that's the, you know, the big boys of the bunch, all had a recommended power supply of 650 watts. The 2070 itself used about 215 watts under load, the 2080 Super, 250 watts, and the 2080 Ti, 260 watts. You stack that on top of the next most hungry uh, thing in your system, which is the CPU, and if you're doing something extremely power hungry, like the Intel 9900K, for example, that thing was very power hungry, very powerful, but also very power hungry. That could use up to about 260, 265 watts on its own, just under load. So if you're running a high-end rig, you've got a high-end CPU and you've got a high-end GPU and they're both using 260 odd watts or so. I mean, it can vary depending on what combination you're using, of course, but just as an example, you get to about 520 watts of power just for those things. Then you need all the rest of the power for the other things in your system, most of which aren't nearly as power hungry. The motherboard itself needs some stuff. Uh, your hard drives need some stuff. Your fans and any, you know, water cooling and things like that, they always use a little bit of power as well. And you do want to overbuild when it comes to your power supply because they are most efficient uh, and most reliable when you're not running at like the bleeding edge. Like if you have a system that uses 550 watts of power, like you've, on paper, you've calculated out 550 watts, you don't want to put a 550 watt power supply in that unit because you'll be running at 100% utilization all the time. And that is not a very smart thing to do because you do want some overhead, some padding in your power supply basically for any fluctuations. And so the power supply doesn't have to run at 100% capacity all the time because not only will that make it run hotter, it will shorten its lifespan over time. It'll make the fans run uh, louder and things like that. And these power supplies are at their most power efficient at between sort of 60 and 80% utilization anyway. It varies from model to model, but that's sort of the general window you wanna aim for. So you do wanna overbuild your power supply a bit, which is why NVIDIA's recommendation for these 20,000 series cards was a 650 watt power supply. But with these new generation of cards, if you are looking to get the 3070, you should still be fine. Its recommended system power supply is still 650 watts and its power utilization is 220 watts. While the 2080 Ti, which the 3070 is sort of on balance with as far as performance goes, according to Nvidia, that was 260 watts versus 220 watts. So you're actually getting better performance per watt, which is one of the things they were talking about in their presentation. These cards are more power efficient even though they're using more power. You're getting better performance for every watt that comes in basically. However, when it comes to the 3080, and 3090, the recommended system power supply jumps up 100 watts to a 750 watt power supply. And that's where we might run into problem because 650 watt is incredibly common, both in pre-built systems from you know MSI and Alienware and stuff like that, and in custom built systems, because it's basically all you really needed, unless you were going above and beyond and running multiple graphics cards or sort of heavily overclocking high-end desktop stuff and things like that, you probably only needed 650 watts, so that's probably what you have. So you do need to think about this and check on this if you are thinking about upgrading to the 3080 or 3090. You are going to want at least 750 watts to run these things well and still give yourself that safe overhead padding 
that you want. You might be able to just get away with the 650 watt depending on what your CPU is using and things like that, but I wouldn't want to run it like that. Now, the second thing you need to worry about is the connectors on the power supply itself because NVIDIA in their infinite wisdom have decided that the long-standing standard of the PCI power connector that we've used on graphics cards for years and years and years and years and they look like this. Sometimes your graphics card will need one six pin. Sometimes you need the extra two pin to go for an eight pin. Sometimes you need two six pins. Sometimes you need an eight pin and a six pin. Sometimes you need two eight pins. Sometimes on the factory overclocked monster beasties, you'll even need three sets of these eight pin ones. And that's kind of why Nvidia said, you know what, this is getting a bit out of hand. It's time for a new standard. So they just made one up on their own. They didn't, they, you know, they didn't go to the industry standards body that sort of came up with this stuff. They went, you know what, we'll just make our own up. Everyone else can just deal with it because guess what? We're Nvidia, what are you gonna do? Not use our awesome graphics cards? <laughs> the arrogance of it. The absolute arrogance of it. It's always a pain in the ass when existing standards just get replaced. I mean, ask any long-term Apple user about this. When they got rid of floppy drives, everyone freaked out because everyone we still need floppy drives. Everyone still needs floppy drives. And then they did the same thing again with uh, CD-ROM drives and DVD-ROM drives. Oh, everyone's still, why, why are you getting rid of the optical drives? Everyone still needs optical drives. Well, Apple got rid of them and so did the rest of the industry eventually because, well, guess what? They were right. It was time to move on. Same kind of thing is happening here. But like I was just talking about, these things are, are getting less and less convenient to use because we need to use more and more of them for the more powerful cards. And it's getting kind of untidy at worst and very inefficient at best. So NVIDIA go, hey, well, we'll just make up our own. And the issue of course lies in, this is a brand new standard. It's one NVIDIA made up in house. So it's not an industry standard by any means, although it might eventually become one just by default because obviously NVIDIA graphics cards are extremely popular. Don't know if you noticed. But, you know, these are probably on their way out eventually, one way or the other. And like I said in the intro to this video, there are three ways to get around this. Two are pretty straightforward and easy and sort of simple enough. Uh, the other one kind of stinks a little bit. The two easy ways are just with a cable, basically. All these new graphics cards, uh, at least for the first generation, uh, are going to come with an adapter. So you can come out of your regular PCIe power cables, plug in the adapter one end, and the other end goes into the graphics card. This is going to be the least aesthetically pleasing solution because these adapters are probably going to be fairly ugly. There might be some third parties out there that do things like, well, the thing I'm handing here, which is actually an extension. So you come out of your ugly cables from your power supply and into an lovely color matched one uh, so you can hide the rest in the case and just pull the lovely color bit out and plug it in your graphics card and that's what these are. So that's the solution. So right out of the box, you're going to have a solution in the form of the adapter that NVIDIA or the add-in board uh, partners provide themselves or you can get a third party adapter that might look a lot nicer, perhaps even long enough to hide in your case. The other solution is if you have a modular power supply, that is a power supply where you can just plug in the cables you actually need. Some power supplies just have a rope of cables that come out of a grommet hole in them. If you've got that kind of power supply, you are gonna need an adapter or extension of some kind. If you have a modular power supply, you might wanna check with the manufacturer, whether it be Corsair or EVGA or whoever you know your model is, whether or not they are actually going to be selling um, modular cables, so you can just replace the cable using entirely, instead of using an adapter, to a properly matched cable uh, that will go directly into your graphics card there. I know Corsair have already announced they're working on it. I'm not sure about anyone else. I haven't seen any news, but I'm sure they are because these are going to be extremely popular graphics cards. And if you are a big name power supply company, you're probably going to want your customers to be happy, right? Right? And of course, the third and stinky way to solve this problem is simply replacing the power supply altogether, which you may need to be doing already because of what we talked about in the first half of this video. And if you do need to replace your power supply entirely, I would highly recommend you get a modular power supply. And I would highly recommend you make sure whatever brand of modular power supply you are buying, you make sure that they have announced plans to release a you know, appropriate modular cable for these new NVIDIA cards. As I said, I know for a fact that Corsair have already announced that they'll be coming. And I should think the likes of EVJ and Thermaltake and all the other sort of major names in these modular power suppliers will be doing the same because it would be stupid not to. But yeah, we, we are going to be hitting a pain point uh, in this sort of power connector transition for a while. I'm sure it won't be long before we see sort of various kinds of extensions and adapters and modular cables and things like that become fairly common for these. Whether or not AMD are going to follow suit, whether or not AMD can even follow suit, because again, this was a connector 
developed in-house by NVIDIA? Are they going to force AMD to license it? Or are they going to force system builders out there to deal with two completely different cable specifications for the ongoing future? Are AMD going to have to come up with their own solution that is, again, completely separate and, and just make everything a complete pain in the ass for system builders out there? Maybe NVIDIA are even going to try and get this certified as part of the proper standard, as well as these cables. Uh, and, you know... Are they going to do that freely? Are they going to charge a license fee? How, how, how big, monstrous corporate entity are they going to be about this? doesn't matter. I mean, of course it matters, but it doesn't matter as far as the question being whether or not you need a new power supply for these new cards. Hopefully by now I have answered that question with sufficient detail for you to feel confident in your next step in thinking about upgrading to these 3000 series cards. Thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty. I'll catch you next time. And thank you as always to the patrons floating up above there for making a wonderful, generous, kind and glorious and shiny and happy difference in, 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 in their wonderful support. I think that was enough adjectives.